Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. We're here with another uh, Throne of Eldraine deck tech. Uh, so these are some brews that I'm throwing together, obviously untested, but these are decks that I'm going to be playing come the new standard. Um, so it comes out Throne of Eldraine on Thursday. There's a lot of cool cards from the set that we'll be looking to play. Um, we put out a few deck lists like this, similar deck tech ideas, um, but all my brews right now I'm putting up on my Aether Hub account. So you can find all my deck lists there. I'll be writing up a couple articles, hopefully for the new set on there as well. Um, but I'm going to try to do as many of these deck techs as possible before the new set comes out. Uh, so this is a mono green Stompy list. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Stompy is typically referred to as big fat creatures that stomp into battle. Um, so with this deck here, you're getting to play a pretty much solid forest based mana. So you don't have to worry really about rare lands in this case. Uh, so the deck itself will walk you through. We got Pelt Collector. So this is a one drop that grows over time. Uh, we have a lot of creatures in the deck to evolve it at all different power toughnesses. So it can get bigger that way. Once it has three or more counters on it, it can get Trample as well. So something that scales well into the late game. We have a ramp package consisting of Incubation Druid. Uh, which can adapt and become a 3-5 later in the game, and Paradise Druid, which has Hexproof, that takes us to our 4 mana spells. Um, I'm not doing Golden Goose. Uh, I find it inconsistent. Yes, you have the mana on 1, but we really don't have that many plays on 3 to be ramping to in this particular deck. We have a lot more going from 2 to 4 mana, uh, so that's where we want to kind of put our curve. Also, the Gilded Goose really only works as a one-shot ramp, because then you have to spend two mana to create another food token. So I prefer these ones that are consistent ramp in terms of the deck. Uh, we have Titanic Brawl, which is a fight spell. Uh, it costs only one mana if we have creatures with 1-1 one, one counters on it, which Pelt Collector, Incubation Druid, uh, Voracious Hydra, which you'll see, uh, Bark Hide Troll, same idea. They all come in with counters on it, which makes it quite useful. So Bark Hide Troll is... A 2 mana 3 3 effectively in the deck. We can always pop off one of the 1 1 counters for our mana to give a hexproof to the end of turn. But a 2 mana 3 3 is a good way to beat into the opponent. Uh, then we have two Voracious Hydras. Uh, we can pump a bunch of mana. So if the opponent doesn't really have creatures in the deck, we could just present them a very big threat. If not, it's a way to fight opponent's creatures and get us ahead. Uh, then we have two new of the cards Yorvo, Lord of Garen Brig. So this is a 3 mana 4-4, four, four. so it has uh, ca what counters on it again, so it works with Titanic Brawl. Uh, whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on your Orvo, so it gets bigger. Uh, then if the creature's power is greater than your Orvo's, you put another counter on it. So the only thing your Orvo really lacks is evasion, but other than that, it is a very big body. One way we could give it evasion is through Vivian Arcbow. So Vivian's mana cost is usually pretty restrictive to splash in three color decks, sometimes even two color decks, um, but in our deck it's really easy. Uh, I can get this out as early as turn three. Uh, so you can put two 1-1 one -one counters on up to two creatures. They gain trample to end a turn, which gives Yorvo the uh, evasion that we need for the deck. Uh, it's minus three is removal in the sense we can have our creature deal damage to another creature. And then it's minus five. Won't be used as much in our deck, but it is an option to search out from the sideboard. Uh, we have Questing Beast, which is another powerful card. Uh, this has got a lot of text, so if you haven't seen this card before, uh, it is a legendary creature, so we're only playing three, not four. It's a four mana, four, four, haste, vigilance, death touch. Uh, can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. Can't have combat damage prevented. And whenever it deals combat damage to the opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. So you can two for one your opponent that way. The best card in green, uh, if you're playing a forest based mana, is Nisa. She has the mana flare ability to let all our forest tap for two green. Uh, it creates elementals from our lands. Uh, you, there's always a tap and tap shenanigans. And its ultimate can search out all the lands in our library, pretty much. Uh, and then a couple of new cards as well. My dog likes this deck, obviously, you can hear. Uh, Festering Troll King. So this is a 6 mana. Uh, again, the mana cost is usually restrictive, not in our deck. 
Um, so it is a six mana seven six vigilance trample offense defense. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens. And then you could sack three food tokens to return Festering King from your graveyard to the battlefield. And you can only do this during your turn. So unfortunately, you can't do it end the turn to give it pseudo haste. But it's a big body um, that is somewhat recursive. And then one of the, the, the best cards of the new set, at least for a mono green strategy, the Great Henge. So this is a nine mana legendary artifact. Uh, that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control. We have a lot of cheap creatures in our deck that have big power toughness. Uh, so we can get this down pretty early. It ramps us two and gains us two life. And then whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets a, bo a boost of a 1-1 counter, and we get to draw a card. So this is the card advantage engine for this deck. This is probably my favorite deck that I'm excited to play. It's the one I'm going to craft first. Uh, we were playing this in the standard 2020, and I really liked it. Uh, mana base-wise, 22 Force and 2 Castle Garenbrig. Basically, it just gives us a discount. We can tap 5 mana, so 4 plus this, to give us 6 green mana. Uh, so this can just basically play out our Troll King a turn earlier. Uh, might end up cutting those. They're not critical. Force are going to be where you want to go. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Sideboard wise, this is still in development. You want to see what you're playing against to build a proper sideboard, but these are just some generic cards that I feel that would, in some capacity, be good here. Um, so Sorcerer Spyglass versus Planeswalker decks, Crawl Harpooner versus Flyers, uh, Return to Nature if we need to get rid of artifacts or enchantments. This could include like all the Wilderness Reclamation decks we were playing in the standard 2020. Kendra's transformation is pseudo removal, so if there's very difficult to kill creatures or like troublesome things like a say a Yarrick or a Golos, if we can't kill it, uh, we can at least transform it and make it lose all its abilities. It also cycles. Um, first, the counter decks we have Ceratops gives a haste as well. Uh, Biogenic Ooze is against. Uh, Decks either with not a lot of removal or mid-range mirrors, we can drop it down with Nisa out, just create a ton of tokens. Ugin is uh, kind of our removal against control, it's a good way of card advantage as well. And then Plain White Celebration is something I wanted to try out. Uh, basically, it's a flexible card, we can either get four two twos, uh, return stuff to our graveyard, proliferate all counters on our creatures, uh, or gain a bunch of life. You can effectively gain 16 life with this card. Uh, so good for those mirrors. Another card you could play here is Meteor Golem, 7 mana, destroy target permanent when it enters the battlefield. Um, there's flexibility here. Um, that's pretty much the list. It's probably a mid-budget, 28 rares, 9 mythics, but 2 rares are these castles that can be foregone. Um, so that's pretty much it. Like I said, you can find all my Throne of Eldraine deck lists on Aetherhub right now, and I'll come back with a couple more of these. Uh, if there are any deck lists you'd like to see that I haven't featured already, drop a comment below. I'll try to get it out. I got Mono Red on the way. That will be the next one I work on, and I want to do a mill deck as well. But let me know what you think. Uh, if there's kind of more of the fringe decks, like Adventure, Focused, Food Token, stuff like that, or a lot of the budget decks I'll do once the new set comes out, I just want to feel what the cards are like, which ones kind of over overperform and stuff like that. It gives me a better idea to know what the the more fringe, less flashy cards are for these budget builds. Um, and last thing, if you are considering purchasing physical cards for this new set and you are using TCG Player, I do have an affiliate link uh, either on Aetherhub you could click or in the video description down below. Basically all it lets them know is that I sent you to the site. Um, you can purchase the same way you normally purchase, it just lets them know that it was me that kind of referred you, helps support the channel without costing you any money like that. You don't have to pay for subs, anything like that. And it basically just goes to put buying more cards on Arena so we can play more videos. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the video description down below. Have a great one.